distinguished Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I should just like to greet our invitee, the President of Algeria, Mr. Tebun, and for thank him for finding time to visit our forum here in St. Petersburg. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chairman, and I should like to address my words also to the other foreign guests here. F first of all, of course, our forum is dedicated to the development of Russia across the board, all spheres concerned. And I would say that uh, this uh, really is very important event for us in as much as we have much to do and we have to decide exactly what we are going to do in the very near future and who we will work with. And I think that uh, the chairman will also be very interested in that in as much as his particular public will be concerned. And I think that certainly our kind of economic model could be uh, acceptable to other countries and uh, uh, these countries uh, will be able to activate their uh, cooperation with us. So I greet you to the 26th International St. Petersburg Economic Forum. Well, last year when I spoke from this tribune, I talked about the difficulties which uh, Russia was coming up against uh, because of the uh, world situation. Uh, but I also said that uh, we believe in the uh, sovereign independent uh, approach to economics. And I'd just like to say that that year was really the most difficult uh, in terms of our economic history. And that affected logistics as much as uh, anything else uh, and affected every single aspect of economic life. Whereas today, ladies and gentlemen, I think that we can say with confidence that the road forward which we adopted then by Russia works. The macroeconomic uh, way forward which we outlined then is growing, is thriving. And with regard to the results of the end of this of the year, the International Monetary Fund said the growth is uh, 0 0.73, but I think that, uh, in fact, it will be greater, and I think it might even approach 2%. This will allow our country to maintain its place amongst the leading economies of the world. Uh, that uh, can be seen in industry and the retail trade particularly. And 2.9% growth, we note, uh, with relate, uh, with, um, in relation to last year, which has allowed us to uh, provide for economic activity on a wide scale and uh, the situation as I said last year was uh, very very cautious amongst the uh, business community but it was therefore absolutely essential to give a very strong support to business which we did. We supported the soundest uh, economic institutes in the country. So, as I said last year when I spoke here, I outlined the overall holistic approach of uh, our, uh, to the Russian economy. And I think that what I said as a result of our collective uh, work and uh, reform we've done in the administrative sphere we really prepared for uh, these kind of difficult times, and it worked. It worked. 
So what are we talking about? We maintained a responsible, balanced uh, um, lending policy. We note also a minimal increase in unemployment and in inflation as well, which is much better than many other Western countries. And it's uh, near to a historic minimum, 2.2%. Such a low rate has absolutely never been witnessed in our history. So that's very important. As far as macroeconomic, stable macroeconomics is a real advantage and it is a real trigger to development. And I think that uh, in terms of internal political uh, discussions, we had a lot of discussions in terms of, about, in terms of what we lacked uh, macroeconomically, but I think that practice has shown that uh, we should not have been defeatist. Using the uh, using the budgetary mechanisms which we uh, introduced, uh, we have not allowed uh, prices to flare, and our approach was based on a real realistic estimation of what was going on on the ground. And we did a lot to support the budget in terms, and that can be seen in the uh, growing uh, GDP. We have a small deficit, but it is small. So state finances are, on the whole, balanced. The slight deficit has been really due to the fact that we had to move some of the deadlines and try and finish things before time. We have uh, made a lot of progress in terms of uh, state and regional programs as well, and uh, we have uh, intensified activity in the arms and uh, military sphere. And I have to say that, on the whole, this justifies uh, the, our approach from an econ economic point of view. Over January and February, uh, we noted a 9.1 increase in productivity and a similar kind of figure in the uh, months immediately following that. The export of uh, gas and uh, oil uh, has actually increased, and that is very important uh, because uh, the success in oil processing and gas processing uh, has a very immediate knock-on effect on all the other uh, areas of uh, economic, of the economy. In fact, uh, there was a lot of speculation in the West that uh, this would be our downfall, but on the contrary, this has worked very well for us, which has allowed the state to maintain the uh, welfare payments, to avoid poverty, and the results are much better than last year. If you look at that particular category of our population, the lowest uh, income, uh, there has been an increase of something like 30%. And that has affected uh, 1.7 million people, those who are on lowest incomes. Now, here, absolutely every percent has a, has a meaning, is significant. Maybe it's not no not so significant uh, in world terms, but I think uh, it is uh, still very significant. The main trend 
is that we have been able to support all this. We have also put up the minimum wage. So in comparison with the real income of everyone has actually increased in the last quarter. And obviously these tendencies have to be intensified and strengthened. As far as uh, demand is concerned, uh, internal demand, we are seeing very positive uh, indications there. And that is obviously having a positive impact on regional economics. Private initiatives here have been very important under the pressure of uh, uh, under the pressure of sanctions. Uh, people are saying that uh, Russia uh, has gone over or gone back rather to a kind of command economy of the past. Uh, uh, this is uh, absolutely wrong. Private enterprise has forged ahead, and uh, we have. Uh, replace the effect of the uh, uh, migration uh, of uh, international corporations. They couldn't withstand our policies. We did not chase anybody out. On the contrary, we proposed that they should think once again about their Russian partners, but each of our partners had the right to decide what they wanted to do. But the productivity in question has actually been compensated for by our domestic productivity. So, in fact, Many of these businesses have become Russian businesses, even though they have Western logos. We have done a lot also to support the wages of uh, workers in the business sphere. Last year, of course, our uh, businessmen were very worried about uh, the um, exit of the hemorrhage of uh, Western firms, uh, but this has been compensated for, particularly in terms of uh, uh, the clothes industry, shoes, and so on. That uh, now Russian inter uh, Russian uh, enterprises are uh, opening their own shops. The foreigners have left. They have given up uh, two million. Uh, square meters of uh, trading place and uh, millions of rubles. But almost all of that has been compensated for, taken over by Russian business. And we have seen something like uh, 90,000 uh, new registrations, new business registrations. I don't think it's uh, any secret that uh, when I discuss things with uh, Russian business, they actually emphasize the fact that the Western firms shouldn't be allowed back in. On all of these international economic uh, forums and uh, meetings, uh, the main request of me has been from bus Russian business not to allow Western concerns back. The growth rate in this area has been 10% last year. And in fact, we are covering our own needs more or less with this uh, uh, growth in uh, investment and interest. More and more, we are actually hearing positive uh, messages from Western business. They can come back if they want. And we will provide the suitable conditions for them to work in Russia. 
but of course we will be thinking more about our own future, our own domestic industry. Those people who will, will be working for foreign uh, firms and so on, we will consider them to be Russian workers, Russian businessmen. For all companies like that, we have set up a an annual social competition. And uh, at the end of June, we'll be seeing the uh, first edition of that. And we've had something like uh, 5,000 different applications uh, from different countries. And we are seeing new investments from many quarters. And we need to support, particularly at regional level, uh, these new brands. There has been a real, a realistic increase here. And this is uh, particularly noticeable if you compare it with the uh, results of last year. We're also supporting uh, regional investment banks to a large extent. Last year, the rate of the last rate of uh, uh, lending has gone up from 3 and 9% to 17%. So I think these are very uh, encouraging figures. Uh, also, we see a big increase in mortgages, a very important point here is that there have been progress in, uh, particularly in logistics, transport, roads, and so on and so forth. And again, we see a big increase in terms with in terms of last year. And the volume of construction work is also up very considerably. It is increasing and continuing. It went up by some f more than five points, five percent. Infrastructure, cars, roads, railways, all this is covered by this kind of area. We also see that the possibilities of uh, maritime ports has also increased. We will be uh, particularly uh, looking at the uh, progress of markets towards the east and to new routes. In May, we uh, concluded a very important uh, contract with our Iranian partners to do building works, construction works on the uh, Iranian frontier. As far as the oriental or eastern uh, area is concerned. Ever since 2005, we have seen a third, a rise in a third of the trade with Russia. And we have seen the particular efficiency of the Baikal, so-called Baikal system, I would just like to note here the success of the uh, government in terms of in terms of um, increasing the volume of containers from the east. But the main aim, of course, has been to simplify administrative uh, procedures here. We are also concentrating on expanding our commercial fleet. 
and have concluded a particular program for them. And I would just say that uh, only in terms of the present uh, program, the Russian Federation has uh, is has constructed more than 260 new vessels. In comparison with last year, we expect that by 2024, uh, the trade turnover in terms of shipping will be much, much higher. And this will be helped by infrastructure works, particularly in Arctic ports. I'd just like to also say that the work which we are carrying forward in terms of regional development throughout our territory is uh, expanding very rapidly. And more than a thousand new uh, kilometers of uh, roads have uh, been built in that area. I should just like to thank our construction workers, our in engineers and so on for their very re responsible and uh, efficient work. Uh, because I think that next year we will not only just maintain this rate of progress, but we will actually increase it and expand it. And I'm absolutely sure that, that our plans will come true. We have also seen big progresses in terms of uh, communications. Thousands of the kilometers of uh, grid has been installed. And uh, in fact, in comparison with uh, last year, we have increased that by, by a factor of three, which means that communications now will be established with all points of settlement throughout the country. I'd just like to stress here that the development of the regional uh, markets will be very, very important, particularly in terms of tourism, domestic tourism, first and foremost. That has actually grown, according to the uh, state statistics. by 16.10%. We have to really develop very qualitatively our infrastructure links so that the grid will be expanded even further. And for all these projects, of course, we need uh, a proper lending system I think it's also very important to uh, point out that uh, uh, we have uh, put in place a development program for uh, leisure centers uh, in many areas in the uh, Russian Far East, in Caucasus areas, uh, Urals, and so on. And Uh, the development of uh, hotels uh, throughout these uh, tourist regions is also forging ahead. Uh, f more than 4 billion rubles have been invested in this particular area. However, the demand is much higher. So we have worked out an investment structure for that. Uh, and I propose that in the upcoming two years, uh, we uh, devote something like 11 billion rubles uh, to the uh, sphere, which means that uh, more people will be able to spend their holidays uh, in nature preserves and so on. And the incentives which we are uh, creating will allow our business to uh, expand our uh, commercial links uh, with uh, Asia and with Latin America. Uh, uh, but all this is uh, based on five absolute principles, fundamental principles. Uh, 
People said that we would be isolated. On the contrary, we have uh, uh, come up with much better uh, relations in terms of our uh, uh, trade partners. And here I'd like to repeat that in terms of the uh, future markets, we are interested in partners who are not uh, going in for barbaric practices and we are continuing to expand our relations with those countries. The objective market laws will be stronger uh, than uh, the economic climate which means that the previous unip unipolar uh, system is, go is on the blink, and what we are seeing is the emergence of uh, a multipolar system. We have also seen enormous increases, 5.9%. in the energy sphere. And this has actually led to an increase of uh, 6.4 million jobs. So I'd just like to say that the agro-industrial complex has involved investment of more than 40 billion uh, dollars and we will be number one grain exporter by 2026 and we will be seeing record numbers in terms of uh, uh, exports of agricultural products we will be exporting particularly to African countries, for example. Over January and April, it increased by $22.6 million. And there was a huge profit made in 2022 from this kind of area. So uh, obviously what we need to do is to do a lot more in terms of the uh, uh, development of Russia, internal, internal regional areas of Russia. And we have to stimulate investment, inward investment particularly with regard to infra infrastructure and logistical uh, projects, which will allow us to expand the economy uh, really right across the board. Obviously, Russia has not just partners in these areas uh, and, uh, and partners who are only interested in their own profit and who are politically uh, incentivated and they don't want to allow anybody to compete with them. But to those participants in the market, they don't want competitors, so they try to uh, stop things, put barriers in the way, and we are determined to get rid of them. In fact, their policies are in fact impairing their own reputations. Russia will be very much a part of the world economy. I would just like to say in this respect that we have completely done away with a lot of import duties 
and that will increase in 2024. What more? Our colleagues in the um, social welfare sphere, voluntary associations have asked uh, for uh, uh, an amnesty on uh, certain forms of taxation. This is a very extraordinary measure, which uh, we have hardly ever done, but we are doing in the light of circumstances. And we should like to completely do away with this kind of uh, practice which we have seen from foreign partners. The we have seen a lot of uh, changes in the uh, banking sphere as well and an acceleration in the uh, turnover rate of transactions. This is a separate subject in itself, but the currency which we'll be trading in uh, in the Eurasian Trade Corporation will be rubles from now on. And we will be trading with other uh, countries also in rubles, the BRICS countries and uh, the SCO countries too. In all branches of uh, industry, this will uh, be so. And we have uh, extended this practice at least until 2030. This is going to be a huge support to our exporters, especially in as much as they will be uh, opening markets with new markets. Uh, so it's very important that they should be supported. Uh, and we're also making progress in terms of uh, uh, insurance uh, for uh, experts, exports. And obviously, we have to promote domestic uh, production uh, in electronics. This, we can see, is thriving all the time, always making uh, uh, headway, and that even in the case of very small businesses. I don't want to boast, but I think that the outlook here is very, very important. And we have to uh, make sure that we uh, push through the support measures for the electronics industry as, as quickly as possible. And we have to obviously encourage SMEs uh, so that uh, they can work uh, as efficiently as possible. We have to help them, particularly the electronics SMEs, to uh, access big markets like uh, India, China, and Turkey and other countries. And this will be a two-way process as well. And Russian purchasers will have a much better, better uh, spectrum from which to choose. Dear friends, Russia has not stepped back from its fundamental approach to commerce. And we have maintained the stability of our economy right across the board from major uh, industries to SMEs, which is no small thing. We have also supported labor collectives, supported thus the prosperity of millions of Russian families, and today, the outlook is uh, not just to have compensated for the fall in production or the fall in, uh, in economic activity, but to actually anticipate, anticipate in real time the 
um, activities of global trade. I'd just like to uh, repeat once again that the changes in geopolitics has an irreversible character. And we are, we are moving only ahead based on a practical politics and a responsible relationship with the partners in the market. And we believe that this will lead to a qualitatively uh, a qualitative difference in the uh, level of trade. And uh, the business themselves will actually form themselves this progress. This kind of economics, economics of supply, obviously presupposes an enormous uh, development and infrastructural network. New modern industrial capacity will be created and the scientific possibilities for that obviously we possess ourselves at the at, as of now. This is an ec economics of supply and this has this will have an effect on the, our immediate future. And, of course, we can be proud of that. However, there is a, a reverse side of the uh, medal, and people on this, uh, in this uh, chamber know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, we are suffering from a lack of cadres, a lack of skilled uh, uh, workers, and this obviously means that employment, structural employment policies are very important here. Em employment is at the center of our uh, attention. And we have to give citizens the chance to uh, take part in all this and to develop uh, prospective or um, areas which are liable to develop. And I think that we also ought to pay particular attention to those areas where there is very high unemployment. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in, there are such areas still which are lagging behind, uh, and we have to make sure that uh, the people there get trained in new specialities. And uh, I think that we can also think in terms of building up uh, uh, remote working. And there are some like 10 projects uh, uh, on the drawing board uh, already uh, to do that. And of course I cannot but greet programs of that kind. And we are trying to reorientate uh, the work of higher uh, educational establishments uh, towards results. And uh, KPIs will now be very important uh, in terms of those institutions. And we are introducing a system of rating for them. And we are also instituting a five-year five-year scheme uh, in terms of increasing capacity and skilled workers. And the academic academic uh, agreement idea uh, is also very important. Uh, so that the, our graduates can uh, go into a very highly skilled uh, employment. I don't want to go into details about that, but we have actually started that scheme. And, of course, we are also thinking very much in terms of uh, that having knock-on effect of the increase in wages.
the uh, minimum wage uh, is going to be continued to, to be indexed and we have noted an increase there in terms of the standard of living as from the 1st of uh, January 2024 we will index that further and it will rise from 6.3 to more than 18 percent which is much higher than the uh, rate of inflation and rate of growth uh, in the country as a whole and something like almost 5 million people in the country will be affected by these measures so our aim is to double the uh, minimum wage which will have an effect on wages policy throughout the throughout the across the board and of course we will be providing more resources for families and trying to increase the income of such families. So we have to make sure there is a stimulus to uh, find better jobs. And, but there must be some kind of supporting measures to do that particularly for people with families. I think that unemployment really is a great stimulus to people to go out and look for jobs. We are increasing uh, the uh, child allowance uh, to 18 months and we are determined to continue that. We are also, I am also proposing there should be an increase in the uh, uh, rates uh, earned by carers and uh, people who look after the disabled. And we have to uh, remove limitations to the receipt of uh, allowances, particularly uh, where uh, unemployment is concerned. Uh, so that will be a change with the uh, present situation and I have asked Parliament how they can do that as quickly as possible we need to expand SMEs SMEs now uh, employ something like 18 million people in uh, the Russian Federation and we have to support people who want to go into business and I think we've got the first steps uh, outlined here social contracts for example and this implies uh, the possibility of undergoing further training at one of the previous meetings of our forum we talked about the uh, lending mechanisms for SMEs, particularly when uh, SMEs do not have enough deposits to set up businesses. And we have actually uh, introduced a lot of measures uh, worth billions of rubles uh, to do that. And there has been a seven-fold uh, uh, increase uh, in the employment uh, rates of the processing industries. And obviously, we are aiming to increase that even further. And 
I'm particularly concerned here with IT industries and I should like the government to make sure that there is a uh, a nominal uh, system of uh, lending in place for these kind of businesses targeted. I think it's also to expand the scope of these measures, particularly with regard to um, industries which are going through difficulties according to various um, factors like unemployment, uh, lack of uh, skilled labor, and so on. They need resources, and they need special support measures, these particular branches of industry. And of course, the SMEs which uh, become bigger, they lose their uh, support. So until such a time that they actually uh, are beneficiaries of, uh, of um, greater support, they ha they've lost the, the previous one. So we have to do something about that. So it becomes some businesses just become non-profitable. So they remain uh, SMEs instead of going uh, forging ahead. And I think that there is a taxation problem. Uh, and that has been happening, Mr. Chairman, for some time here. And, you know, people will always find a way out this is you know to do with the real conditions of uh, working in Russia so what we have to do is to support development liberate forces and make sure that we have higher skilled workers and the measures that we are thinking about are ones which are going to relieve businesses. And that uh, has to do with taxation incentives. One other very important uh, measure with regard to uh, businesses is uh, state controls. I'd just like to remind you that last year we brought in a moratorium uh, on inspection of Russian businesses and we have actually extended that uh, to 2023. But uh, businesses uh, which are not uh, particularly endangered have also benefit for, for benefited from this measure. So we have carried out 20% less inspections than we did previously. Uh, that's since uh, 2019. Uh, there's something else as well. If businesses are not uh, particularly high risk, then they do not actually need any kind of inspection at all. This is my proposal. And I think that some preventive measures are the only thing that they need to do. Maybe, you know, there is something in all this uh, for your country as well. Um, I don't want to boast, but this uh, may well be useful for other countries. Next year, we will assess uh, what I'm proposing, and obviously I think that uh, preventive measures are limited, but next year we will we will be further decreasing the administrative burden on uh, industries. We are gradually transforming the whole business climate 
and in all regions of the country as well. And business communities, business associations are really very important here. And only they really will be in a position to properly assess these measures I've been talking about. And I want the government to, to uh, look at uh, the use of artificial intelligence in our industry as well. Just like to remind you that uh, to assess business efficiency, uh, it was the World Bank uh, that was responsible for that. And, of course, there is some logic uh, there, and we should not give up that idea. But as far as objective uh, criteria are concerned, cor cor uh, corrective uh, evaluation, I propose the establishment of an agency of uh, which will work nationally with uh, business associations and corporations so that uh, we will be able to materialize all this uh, on a step-by-step -step basis. And, of course, we have to also think uh, we cannot not mention the decriminalization measures for business. Uh, we have to reduce to a minimum any kind of criminal activity within the business community. And I hope very much that nobody doubts that we will be neglecting this particular subject. Many of the uh, measures uh, which the government uh, is uh, thinking about here have in fact become laws, have become enshrined in legislation. And I would also like to uh, talk about even more proposals because there are a lot of laws which are no longer uh, uh, applicable, no longer suitable. So what we've been doing, uh, what we've been seeing is uh, quite a, uh, a, a hemorrhage of, um, of property, and we have to pay particular attention to, uh, to this kind of area. So we're going to reduce the thresholds by a factor of two for uh, property. And we're going to increase fines on criminal activity in business speculation on securities and so on and so forth. And we have actually found that in the light of the work we have been doing, this has actually uh, been reduced very considerably. And we have noticed that there has been a certain rate of success here because we have involved the forces of law and order. What we're seeing is a replacement of attitudes and this kind of uh, semi-criminal activity has actually subverted industry. So we must make sure that where there are those uh, particular defects, we address them. We have to strictly follow through the 
um, the sense of the legisl past legislation, look at it very carefully. We have to make sure that we exert a much uh, closer, um, more careful control of such areas. Mature businesses must also be uh, globally competitive. And our biggest industries must, must work under Russian law. And any kind of business has to uh, be subjected to uh, this system. The situation where uh, profits from business come from uh, foreign uh, trade, this is simply not acceptable. And we have to make sure that this situation is turned around. Uh, some people have... in the West there has been a total uh, plundering or violation of all the uh, rules of uh, the Russian jurisdictional area but I've said this a lot about our business. We have to make sure that uh, investment is made in Russia. And I think that there will be big profits uh, to be uh, gained here. Investments in the social welfare uh, area and in our citizens uh, will uh, bring really big profit, reliable profit. And Russian citizens, uh, for them, two special areas, including Kaliningrad, have been outlined, or earmarked rather, as special uh, for taxation, preferential taxation. These people have uh, previously not been able to make it, um, often because of the uh, insistence of uh, unfriendly foreign nations uh, who simply don't want to allow uh, Russian businessmen on their markets. So I think that we obviously have to accelerate measures here and to simplify the procedure uh, for registering uh, Russian business, especially when they are being blocked by foreign countries. We have to uh, follow that through to December of next year and to launch a system of uh, measures or for legislative uh, legal protection uh, for uh, Com uh, companies in difficulty in this area. It's uh, quite obvious from looking at what's happening, that uh, some people really fell foul of this whole system of uh, trying to um, trying to uh, export their uh, profits. So 
also for owners of industries it is very important that we support them from a uh, legal point of view all these proposals uh, friends uh, are aimed at uh, increasing competences and increasing domestic production and some, something like three trillion rubles will be uh, sacrificed by the state to that end next year and a whole raft of measures will be uh, introduced as I said to support business at the end of February the so-called cluster cluster platform um, was introduced and uh, that will give uh, the possibility of taking out loans at lower interest rates than the banks and this will uh, be very important for businesses and preference will be given to those industries which uh, can uh, uh, increase uh, the assembly line in the next three years and in the energy sector particularly we have to make sure that we take our decisions with regard to vital economic interests we need technological commercial agreements with uh, friendly partner states and this we need we have to make sure that we uh, increase the financial basis of such businesses <coughs> uh, there are 26 very major uh, projects in question here <coughs> Fertilizers, coal, and ports, uh, logistics around the Baikal, for example, <coughs> and another uh, another um, seven projects uh, worth some three hundred forty-five uh, uh, billion rubles uh, have also been uh, approved. <coughs> so the technological sovereignty of Russia has to be protected and uh, supported <coughs> we have other uh, supported measures also to the tune of uh, 200 billion rubles uh, and Obviously, we have to tap the uh, tap the, pos the potential of the f Russian fund for our best industries. Obviously, uh, the obtaining securities here can be based on different criteria, uh, but the Russian banks at the moment are actually doing that. And we are launching a special in, uh, project here, uh, or pro measure rather, to encourage people. There are private equity funds which are very important, play a very important role here. This can be unblocked freed up as I said in my address we are uh, supporting the uh, release of equity funds uh, for the development of IT industries particularly and we have to encourage uh, purchases of these uh, securities and a special decision has been taken in that regard and 
the shares of companies has to be done through the Russian Stock Exchange. A very We have to rely here on the long-term interests of the uh, Russian purchasers where the state guarantees the return of uh, funds. So let me just repeat that we have to have a situation whereby people are investing in Russia and actually plowing back the results into Russia. In Moscow and here in St. Petersburg, uh, we have a whole raft of measures uh, to encourage investment. And we have to help particularly the other regions of the country which simply ca haven't got enough resources to take advantage of uh, all these new developments. So first and foremost, we have to accentuate the importance of the regions. Uh, then in addition, we have to uh, make sure that there are equal criteria in place for uh, launching new projects for all regions. And we have to look at the taxation measures in all of those cases. Unfortunately, we can't say that the new mechanism is fully is perfect. So we have to uh, increase the uh, efficiency of the taxation system there. And as I've said, one of the most important things uh, for the future is to ensure the IT sovereignty of the country. As I said, from uh, next year on, the regions will uh, be able to benefit from this uh, whole new uh, taxation regime. Obviously, there are risks here in uh, lending to regions and so on, but uh, I think that that is you know, something we can work on. Let me just repeat that the important thing here is to uh, encourage business. We have a team in government which is uh, dedicated to that purpose and we have to make sure that our ratings in terms of uh, the whole country goes up. So the Chechen Republic uh, it comes top in terms of uh, regions, uh, Saratov, uh, Ninetsky and Zabaikal regions uh, are also very uh, you know, up in the top ratings there. So I wish you success. Services are also an essential part of this new um, supply economy. And all that is uh, covered by the uh, term uh, cautious production. This, we can see how these new measures uh, are actually being very uh, increasing efficiency. We have to make sure that success is ensured not only in the basic industries, the uh, major industries, but in uh, SMEs and uh, in the welfare area. Artificial intelligence, of course, cannot be neglected here. 
So it is absolutely essential to make sure that we increase automatization and that will affect transport and infrastructure in particular. Russia has not only a huge potential here, but um, decision-making capacity as well. And I think that this forum w is well aware of that. For example, there is a uh, driverless uh, Yandex taxi which has been launched in Moscow. This is a very good thing, but it's only the beginning. Industrial robots uh, are very important to... Uh, I'm told that uh, they, they are going to be introduced to a much greater scale as from the 1st of uh, July. This will be critical for our economy. And then we need to have a management system which is based on results. Uh, this should be across the board, including, including, including in education. We have to uh, support the national programs here in the creation of uh, artificial intelligence, for example. Specific activity has actually, on well, this uh, score, has been uh, agreed, but we have to uh, accelerate it. And in the near future, well, very soon, we will be hearing uh, a presentation with about that. We have an annual conferences so, uh, devoted to artificial intelligence, and uh, we have a particular forum called Forum of Future Technologies, which will begin this year. companies, educational establishments, and so on, will be presenting their results. And the first forum will happen uh, very soon, in July. And uh, obviously we have to uh, pay great attention to data processing. We have to make sure that home markets are encompassed by these uh, uh, new uh, artificial means, robot robotization and artificial intelligence. Let me repeat, we have to access more and more areas and institutes uh, to form our economic future, our technological-based future. And that will, of course, uh, be incorporated in on an ev everyday basis in Russian industry. And in terms of uh, uh, digitalization, we are one of the leading countries in the world. Dear friends, uh, the context of this uh, forum does not allow us to uh, deal in all aspects of what is happening in the economy of Russia. But I'd just like to point out that uh, a detailed, a detailed um, processing of all these measures is the task of the Russian government. And uh, we have to make sure that uh, our economic growth uh, is um, in line with the increase in prices due to inflation. The inflation at the end of the year, I think, will be in the region of uh, 5%. Uh, this is uh, not only for Russian banks, but also for uh, production units throughout the country. So I should like to, to pay particular attention to that. And I'd just like also to emphasize the need that there should be a real uh, economic payback for uh, government schemes. 
this will be very important when we um, draw up the next three-year budget. In this connection, I'd just like to mention also the whole idea of this uh, supply economy. Where there is supply, there must be demand. And it has to be uh, connected with an increase in the welfare of our citizens. And I'd like to end here what I, with what I began. Uh, the need to look at unemployment and to keep inflation down. We have to make sure that the real income of Russian citizens rises. Professional importance, a professional education, vocational education is very, very important, as I said before, to uh, make sure that we uh, can fill the highly skilled jobs which are uh, being required at the moment. All this obviously will have a knock-on effect on increasing the uh, international standing rating of the country. It is impossible to actually increase the level of uh, the level of uh, artificial intelligence uh, production and so on if we have low skilled workers. So once we have this in place, demand will increase and we will be aiming at a sovereign industry. We have been in conclusion, really up against the wall, a, a huge number of logistical and financial problems. i just like to repeat, though, uh, what I said recently at a different uh, forum, and that is that cooperation at all levels of uh, government is absolutely essential for businesses and we have to ensure the industrial and agricultural sovereignty of the country. And we have to support government investments in infrastructures and ecological structures. And all this has to be in line with the growth of wages and welfare. And I should like you, please, to pay particular attention to that. Russia has an incredibly uh, ambitious economic uh, uh, agenda here. This is a stimulus for all of us to increase the rate of development and to aim at uh, more for every citizen. And I think this will strengthen our sovereignty in all areas. And it will open up the possibility of uh, fair, equal uh, competition between all countries and where each country, including Russia, will determine its own future. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. I thank you. Thank you very much for that very impressive speech. Before giving the floor, though, to the President of Algeria, I uh, would like to ask a couple of questions. You talk a, a lot about very 
important subjects and uh, also uh, cited uh, very big uh, statistics and figures with regard to uh, the way forward for Russia, its uh, prosperity and welfare, uh, the development of uh, the Russian economy. All this, of course, is very positive and so on. And I'd just like to emphasize that all this is happening, of course, against the backdrop of the uh, Ukrainian war and a very, very complicated international context. And what we would very much like to hear from you, what uh, is actually happening militarily in London, and Washington and many other countries in the West, uh, they are talking a lot about the Ukrainian counteroffensive. And uh, what is actually happening has not actually justified the, ju the uh, expectations of the collective West. And it turns out that this is not tactical successes on the part of the uh, Ukrainians. But what interests me in particular uh, is that this has happened actually without touching uh, the Russian front line. But it would appear that uh, Ukrainian equipment is uh, being worn out before it actually gets into uh, full contact with the front line, Russian front line. The Ukrainians are being uh, trained in the West and so on. What do you think about this situation? And how serious do you think it is? Although quite clearly from your presentation, you are uh, optimistic about how Russia is actually dealing with that situation. Well, I have just have a meeting with our uh, uh, war correspondents and uh, I'd just like to remind you that the war in Ukraine was begun by the Ukrainian regime uh, with the support of their uh, Western uh, sponsors in tw 2014. And everybody tries to avoid speaking about that in the West. So I have to remind everybody that uh, uh, aviation, bomb bombing, and uh, artillery and so on began then in the Donbass. And that is war. And then our Western partners actually categorically refused uh, to, uh, to uh, support the uh, agreements, and uh, Russia uh, asked and they asked us to stop uh, these uh, aggressions. But we know how all this began. When they signed the Minsk agreements, they publicly said that they were not interested in uh, stopping it. They said it in public. So I was just forced to use uh, the armed forces in response to uh, the request of the uh, Donetsk and uh, in order to stop this armed uh, uh, operation. That's the first thing. Secondly, we can see that uh, Western countries are uh, taking utmost uh, efforts to make sure that uh, there is a tactical uh, defeat of uh, Russia on the field. But we um, have uh, made sure that uh, our aim is uh, denazification and demilitarization of uh, Ukraine. But as far as the uh, demilitarization is concerned, soon Ukraine will stop actually using its own equipment. 
everybody knows uh, uh, what they're using, and it's all brought in from outside. Whereas our defense industry is uh, increasing its uh, productivity day by day. Uh, something like 2.77% uh, 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 recently. And it is growing by a factor of 10. And this tells us that we have a lot of uh, capacity in hand. As far as the counteroffensive is concerned, then sometimes, you know, they succeed, sometimes we succeed. So, but uh, essentially what we need to remember is that they're using their strategic uh, reserves And, but they haven't actually succeeded in making sure that their troops uh, enter uh, territories. Uh, obviously, losses are very big, uh, but I think it's something like 10 times more than the Russian army. That's a fact. In terms of uh, equipment, uh, they are increasing day by day. I think that uh, 180 tanks were lost by the uh, Ukrainian army. And uh, 168 armored cars. Uh, uh, I'm not talking about actual casualties. That's been uh, uh, announced by the uh, Ministry of uh, Defense. Uh, there has been no success here. As we speak, uh, there's been an attempt by the adversary to attack various uh, tank units. And two tanks and armored cards were involved. They lost a couple of tanks, and, you know, combat was engaged, or well, is engaged right as we speak. But I think that the Ukrainian armed forces has no chances at all. I have no doubt about that at all. Thank you very much. You have uh, annoyed West, the collective West, particularly by your uh, announcement that uh, the uh, Kiev regime is uh, a Nazi one. And they say Zelensky is the legitimate uh, uh, president. And in fact, he is uh, fighting against everything bad in Russia. So how, d how would you reply to that? Well, I've got a lot of Jewish uh, friends, uh, and they say that he can't be a Jew. It's shameful to call him a Jew. And that's not uh, a joke or irony. The heroes of Ukraine are now considered the neo-Nazis and the uh, accomplices of uh, uh, Hitler. Six million Jews died in the uh, Holocaust and half of them were in Ukraine and particularly at the hands of the Banderists. I didn't uh, doubt that you would uh, ask me uh, this question, so uh, I prepared the following notes.
one of the leaders was from in 39 Moscow and the jury are the biggest enemies of Ukraine he said So we have to employ the same kind of uh, methods as the Nazis with the Jews. And the German unit in Lvov, some Stepan Lukovsky writes, as far as the Jews are concerned, we will apply all the all methods to lead to their complete annihilation. What does that actually mean? It's the testimony of some monster after the war he said that he had shot a whole uh, uh, Jewish family you, you just can't read it without a lump in your throat And I think you know the whole family, the wife, the 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 daughter, uh, eighteen eighteen years old daughter, and uh, they all knew that they were going to be shot, and they shot children, children. One and a half million. Jews were killed like that. I'm not talking about Russians or Poles who haven't actually forgotten uh, what happened uh, in those years in Ukraine. But we're talking about the Holocaust at the moment. You know what? I apologize, but... Uh, to the chairman. I knew that you would ask me this. We're always talking, talking about the same thing. Bandera uh, was an anti Semite and neo Nazi, but nobody actually wants to hear that. And he, Zelensky, is actually covering up for these uh, monsters. Why does he put these uh, Nazis on pedestals? Uh, he can do what he likes as the leader of the government, but this is something outrageous. It's an excerpt from what happened in 1941, Babi Yar. 